Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at uh, the um, properties that we can extract from the grayscale color occurrence matrix and to see how we can apply it, uh, so apply the, those uh, properties um, to describe the texture of a region and to use that uh, for, uh, for instance, a segmentation task. Um, so if we uh, first go to the notebook here, uh, I have loaded uh, the same image as in the previous video, so the desert image. And so now, instead of using the uh, the color information that we uh, that we used in the previous video, we are going to uh, try to use uh, texture descriptors in the form of the properties of the grayscale concurrence matrix. So first of all, we are going to convert the image to uh, grayscale. So this is uh, just using the built-in uh, scikit image function. I'm converting it to uh, grayscale and then just rescaling everything to um, to be unsigned 8-bit integers because RGB to gray uh, converts it to uh, floats uh, from 0 to 1 and I want everything to be uh, from 0 to 255 for the grayscale uh, co-occurrence matrix to work. Um, and let's first um, try to, to look uh, at the grayscale co-occurrence metric and the kind of properties that we can extract. So let's say that we take two different regions from our, uh, our image. One region that we take in the uh, clouds, so I've taken from 100 to uh, 200 in the y dimension and from 800 to uh, 900 in the x, so this will be a square around here. So right in the in the clouds, and I will take another region uh, in the middle of the desert. And if I look at those, I can see uh, so that of course they, they look um, very different. But now, can we um, see that difference when we uh, go through uh, to the to the the grayscale uh, co-occurrence matrix? Um, so let's remind ourselves first of what the grayscale co-occurrence matrix um, represents. What we will have is that we take uh, certain angles and displacements uh, in the in the in the region, and we are going to be looking at pairs of pixels with uh, with that uh, displacement. So if we take an angle of zero, so let's say uh, uh, horizontal, um, so on the on the horizontal, and a displacement that of ten, that means we look at uh, pairs of pixels that are separated by ten pixels on the uh, x-axis. Uh, from each other and we are going to be looking at the values of those pairs of pixels and we are going to um, to put uh, the to, to create the gray the, the co-occurrence matrix which will be uh, uh, 256 by 256 so for the, the number of, of possible values in each uh, of that each pixel can take and if the pixel at position one for instance here has a value of in this case 95 and the other pixel from the pair at the value of let's say 162 uh, we will just add one to the uh, co-occurrence matrix at position uh, 95 uh, 162 and we'll do that for every pair of pixels corresponding to this uh, angle and displacement and we'll do that for all the pairs of angles displacement also that uh, that we ask for so here i'm just going to say to take the uh, angle 0 and pi over 2 so uh, 0 and 90 degrees um, and just a displacement of 10 pixels. I'm going to compute for uh, the, so two. There will be two grayscale co-occurrence matrices for each of the uh, region. Uh, one for angle zero, one for angle pi over two. And I'm just going to uh, plot those uh, to to have a look at uh, what we can see. And immediately, uh, just by looking at those co-occurrence matrices, we can see that. Uh, the texture of the of the image uh, will have a huge influence on the shape of this uh, co-occurrence matrix. So in the cloud regions, um, we have something that's relatively uh, concentrated here uh, in, in some values. And even between the two different angles, we have a kind of a, uh, a big difference in the, in the shape that is probably due to the fact that we have, um, so we have clearly uh, a different texture if you look at it uh, from a uh, horizontal perspective where we have this kind of uh, big gradient in the middle um, than we have in the uh, vertical uh, axis where, where everything is a lot uh, more um, uh, homogeneous if we, if we look at it, even though there is also quite a lot of contrast uh, 
in it. Uh, whereas in the uh, desert region, it's uh, a lot more uh, random. Um, so if you take pixels that are 10, 10 pixels apart, um, the, 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 the texture is a lot more uh, noisy and random, and so we c it's much harder to, 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 uh, to determine uh, where those pixels uh, will be. And this uh, is reflected in the uh, coherence matrix where everything is just spread out uh, everywhere because it's very ha um, there is no uh, kind of consistent pattern for corresponding to those uh, to those displacements. So there are probably some uh, some peaks uh, here that corresponds um, kind of to to, to the, 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 the 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 horizontal pattern here of the of the I think it's trees probably or uh, uh, cactuses probably at this point. Um, but uh, but it's it's a lot uh, harder to 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 get. Um, to 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 uh, to to get this um, this pattern just from looking at the uh, coherence matrix, uh, but so we can see that using different displacements and looking at different regions, we get very different matrices uh, uh, as a result. And this is exactly what we want, since we want this to be characteristics of the uh, texture of the um, of the region that we are looking at. Um, but now, of course, we this is still uh, difficult to manipulate programmatically. Uh, we just have still a 256 by 256 uh, matrix. Um, we always try to uh, summarize the information as much as possible into uh, something that we can that we can use afterwards for some thresholding, some distance computation, or, or anything like that, uh, as we've done in the in the previous video. And so, uh, for that, we can go through the um, to the properties of the coherence matrix, which will allow us to summarize the information contained in the coherence matrix into some um, some very uh, uh, easy to use afterwards uh, metrics. So, 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 so this will uh, really uh, summarize a lot the, the the information, synthesize information into a few values that correspond to the different matrices. And so, with the circuit image, we have a few uh, options uh, that we that we can uh, compute. Um, so we have the contrast, the similarity, homogeneity, the angular second moment, the energy, and the uh, correlation. So let's uh, briefly look at what those uh, means. And so first of all, if you look at the, at the contrast, the way it's, it's defined, we'll take the sum on uh, all, so on the entire matrix, so on both dimensions, i and j, um, from 0 to 255. We'll look at uh, pig is the uh, just the value in the coherence matrix, if we, um, as we've done here, we've normed, we've normed it, so the, the 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 sum is equal to one. So this is akin to a uh, probability of uh, a pair of pixels with that particular displacement having uh, these two values. Um, so we can use that that directly, and uh, this will be uh, multiplied by. Um, i minus j squared. So what does this mean? It means that we are going to take the values uh, here. We are going to multiply each of those values by a certain weight that depends on the difference between the two uh, pixel values squared and uh, sum all, all of those. And we can look at this um, these uh, weights. So this is what I've done uh, here. Uh, let me just put that in a bit more a bit more visible. So if we look at the uh, what I've done here, I'm just taking a um, creating a matrix uh, of the same size here, 256 by 256, and I'm putting in this uh, matrix the uh, i minus j uh, squared. So this term of the uh, of the equation. So this is what we are going to multiply each uh, probability uh, by, and we see that we have something that um, that will uh, basically give a lot more weight to any um, any value that we have close to those uh, to the two corners uh, here, and uh, and the way that uh, this uh, the, the value change here to the weight change across this diagonal uh, is shown here, and we have just a square uh, relationship. Um, so we can do the same with the dissimilarity. The dissimilarity is. Um, give us kind of the same information, but instead of uh, squaring, we'll just take the absolute difference. So this will not be as uh, uh, biased towards the, uh, the values that are in the, in the two corners, um, but we will have this time a, uh, a linear relationship uh, between the, 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 the weight and the difference uh, between the two values. So we have something that, is, uh, that goes linearly uh, on, this, on this diagonal, uh, the gradients. 
And finally, uh, this, the, 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 the third one uh, with kind of the same ID is the homogeneity, except this time it's, um, it's inverted. Uh, this time we, we are, uh, are giving more weight to, the, to, the, to the, the, the pairs that are close to, the, uh, to this diagonal. Um, so that where, where the, 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 the two, peaks, two uh, pixels in the, in the pair have values that are very uh, similar to each other. Um, and so the relationship is that uh, this time we are dividing the, uh, the probability by 1 plus uh, i minus j squared. And so this relationship, this weight is shown here, where we are giving a lot more weight to uh, pixels that are um, so to, to pairs of pixels that are uh, on this uh, diagonal, where it will be equal to, to one if you're on the diagonal, and then quickly falls down to uh, to very low value. And so anything that's not uh, on the diagonal will be uh, will basically not count to the uh, homogeneity value. So this uh, is really uh, a harsh um, uh, metric that will uh, that will only keep basically things that are uh, almost on the on the uh, diagonal. Um, so uh, typically we'd expect here that uh, the, um, for the desert we will have a very uh, low uh, homogeneity and uh, slightly higher probably for the, uh, for the, for the cloud. Um, so the, the next three are uh, a bit different. Uh, so for the uh, sec uh, second moment, we are no longer uh, looking at the uh, difference between the, 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 the two values. So we are no lo longer waiting by uh, weighing by, by, by anything like that. We are just taking the uh, square of every, um, of every prob probability um, and then summing uh, all across the uh, concurrence matrix. So if we just quickly uh, take a look at two uh, fake examples. Um, the first one here, I'm, I'm creating uh, a, a matrix where I only, uh, only have value on this diagonal. So, um, this is what the i the, the, the i method from NumPy does. It's uh, giving me a matrix where I only have ones on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. Um, and I'm doing I'm, I'm creating another matrix where I'm just uh, putting ones everywhere in the matrix. And in both cases, I'm I'm uh, norming them to so that the sum is equal to uh, to one. And if I compute the, um, the second moment, the angular second moment from, for both of those, I will see that uh, with, the, uh, with the i, since, since all the values are concentrated and so we have higher values uh, in, the, in the diagonal and zero everywhere else, we'll have a higher uh, sum than if we uh, have uh, everything completely spread out. Since if everything is completely spread out, we have very small values that are squared. So we have extremely small values that are summed up and the, 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 the sum uh, only ends up to something like uh, 10, um, 10 to the power of minus uh, 5. So this, again, is a metric that will uh, uh, give us uh, kind of how concentrated or dispersed the, um, the, 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 the values are in the co-occurrence matrix. But this time, it's no longer weighted by uh, if they are on the diagonal or not. So if I just concentrated all the values in another part of the uh, of the matrix, it would also um, give a, a high uh, ASM. Um, and the energy is just the square root of that. And finally, the, um, the, the correlation um, is slightly uh, more, more, more complex to compute. Uh, and it will give us, uh, well, uh, how correlated um, the, the, the two pairs of value, of value uh, are. Um, and uh, we can. Uh, Again, look at uh, the two uh, fake examples. Um, with the, uh, with if, if we have everything on the diagonal this time, uh, it means that the two, uh, two values are highly uh, correlated. If we have everything dispersed, it means there is no correlation. Um, and this is kind of what uh, it will uh, measure as well. So we always measure kind of the same thing, but under different forms. And this will give um, different type of, uh, of information and, uh, and favor different types of, of patterns uh, that we can recognize in the uh, in the image, and um, so those are those that are um, kind of uh, available directly uh, from from the the scikit image uh, methods. Uh, there are more things that we could probably uh, uh, try to, to to compute from there, but we have kind of here the the, the, the most common commonly used uh, metrics. Um, 
So what can we do with that? Well, we can um, know the, the um, compute them on a real uh, in a real region from from our image. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take the two. Um, so for for each region, for each region, we are going to compute the two co-occurrence matrices. So for the the, the zero and ninety degrees uh, angles and displacement of ten. Um, and I'm going to compute three of the properties. I'm going to take one from those three. I, I'm going to take the, the contrast, so the one that is kind of in the, in the middle in terms of penalizing the, the, the extreme. The homogeneity is the one that penalizes the most, and the dissimilarity is the one that is uh, the more, more linear. So I'm going to take the contrast, I'm going to take the energy, and I'm going to take the uh, correlation. So we have kind of three different uh, metrics um, that, that they keep. Um, and I will put uh, all of those into uh, just a, uh, a vector. So since I have two um, co-occurrence matrices uh, for each region, I should have a vector with six uh, values for, for each uh, region. And um, so I can do that uh, for the two regions that I've already taken, so the region in the cloud and the region in the desert, desert. and I get six values corresponding to um, so the three properties for the two co-occurrence matrices. And so these six values will be now my feature vector that summarize the texture information contained in a single uh, region. And what I can see here, which is a good sign already, is that it seems that the, uh, the value are, values are relatively uh, different uh, for, 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 um, for the two regions, which are taken into different parts of the image. So here I'm at 5 uh, 10 to the power of 2 uh, against 2 to the power of 3 um, etc and I see that there is uh, quite some difference in most uh, metrics so that's a good sign um, now I can quickly uh, look at what it's, it's, it's doing if I use the same algorithm as in the previous video now I'm going to cut the image in uh, regular cells uh, compute the descriptors for and compute the, the descriptors for each uh, each region and so the descriptor will be uh, computing the grayscale co-occurrence matrix for both uh, for, for, for displacement of 10 pixels and both angles and then getting the uh, six features from from those and so now I'm, I'm going to have a, a matrix with uh, 15 cells in the x dimensions 10 cells in the 10 in the uh, y dimension and six features describing each of those uh, cells uh, the next step is to um, normalize those uh, descriptors. Since this, this, in, this, uh, in this case, the, uh, the scale of the um, descriptors is very different. So we have some that are, uh, as you can see, between, between, between 0 and 1 for the correlation, for instance. Uh, and we have others that can go to uh, a few hundreds or even thousands. Uh, so we want to, to make sure that when we, uh, when we use those to, com to compute distances between regions, um, in feature space, uh, our feature space is uh, normalized and rather than just dividing by the maximum, this time I will um, do really a standardization where I uh, remove the mean and divide by the uh, standard deviation. Um, so now I can again take a reference, uh, a reference region and I will take, uh, so 9.7 will be somewhere in the, uh, the bottom of the desert. Um, and um, compute the uh, compute the, 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 the descriptors for that reference and then for every other de, uh, de, uh, region of the image uh, we can compute the uh, Euclidean distance in feature space between each region and, uh, um, and the reference and we can see uh, once again that um, we have something that already uh, looks uh, promising. Uh, we have uh, things that are very close in terms of texture uh, in the rest of the desert, and then we we have things that are more different uh, when we when we get in the in, in the sky. And now I can do the same thing that I've done in the previous video. Just resize this to go um, on on the original image. Do a Otsu thresholding uh, on on these. Uh, on these distances and try to look at the resulting uh, mask and we can see that we have something that's not perfect we have uh, some um, some stuff remaining in the in the clouds and we are missing one region here in the uh, in the desert but uh, for something that again was done very quickly i didn't try 
different uh, uh, displacements uh, which could give us uh, better results. If we do look at more displacements, uh, we can probably get something uh, something better. Um, and I completely removed all color information which we could uh, re-inject in some form or another in the in the descriptor. So this is just based on the grayscale uh, texture that we can uh, see that we find a significant difference between the desert regions and the cloud region, which is uh, what I wanted to show. So uh, we'll still have uh, one more video uh, um, on texture um, description, um, so on, on texture descriptors uh, to, to, to try to, to, um, to see how we can uh, use that to, to get some uh, more precise um, uh, segmentation. Uh, but that's it for, for this video and I will see you in the next one.